this extraordinary story uh, from Sadiq Khan, the London mayor, suggesting that prisoners who've just been let out of jail should be uh, allowed to perhaps jump the queue uh, for housing because they they basically need housing. Otherwise, uh, they they are in breach of their bail conditions, uh, and uh, and we basically need to uh, need to help them. He told the. Uh, the Times' is Crime and Justice Commission. There is a big shortage of housing in London, but there needed to be an honest conversation about the need for some prisoners to jump the queue to get housing to avoid them reoffending again. Bearing in mind, almost 1,700 prisoners were freed under the early release scheme on Tuesday, um, and many of those didn't have anywhere to live. Uh, but with one in 50 Londoners currently mm. homeless, perhaps a bigger problem than in many other parts of the country, but it's still an issue in most parts of the country, um, giving priority to offend us? Do you think that's going to fly with voters? Well, that coming off the back of priority very often being given to migrants, both legal and illegal, for various different reasons. And I'd, I'd be curious to know, what do we think it's going to take longer to do, to save and dutifully work to get your own house, or to commit yeah. burglary and get yourself a court date, yeah. get released after a third of your sentence, and then get put on the housing ladder because you're potentially homeless? Like, this is not a very good way of persuading people that you are the grown-ups in the room, yeah. that you have their key, core interests at heart. And this, of course, coming on the back of Angela Rayner saying, actually, the housing target for building more houses in London is going to be lower than everywhere. Yeah. So we're actually going to reduce it. I just don't think people are going to... The young people who like, were supposed to be sort of targeting and saying, we're going to give you a better deal, yeah. they're not going to look at that and go, oh, how compassionate, how wonderful. They're going to sit there and go, hang on a second. Yeah, this, this is not what we were promised at all. You were supposed to be making our lives better. And here there are potentially dangerous people jumping the queue. Why? Because you let them out of prison early? So you're just moving them from one unit yeah, to another. Exactly. I mean, it is, it is. I mean, I'm not, I doubt they're going to be getting houses. But again, even if they're just in a hostel, there are lots of other people. You've got families living in b and mm for Christ's sake, you, you know, whole family in one room. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. There are lots of vulnerable people it's, on our streets who have not broken the law, yeah. who will not get this treatment. Yeah. It's, it's profoundly it's unfair. Just, exactly. But again, don't release them if you haven't got yeah. the, the housing for them. That, that's, you know, everything is always the wrong way around, isn't mm. it? Extraordinary, the story, although not really a surprise. I mean, I'm just waiting for somebody who has been let out of jail on Tuesday. I mean, lots of the people being let out, you know, the, the tattooed across every inch of their face, people go, oh, yeah, you know, I expect I'll probably be back in in a, in a few weeks' time. Well, yeah. I'll uh, vote so Labour we. for life now. But yeah, vote, yeah, I'm a lifelong <laughs> Labour voter, was the, the famous one. But one prisoner who was uh, released uh, on Tuesday, a uh, 28-year-old man, um, he was re-arrested within moments, I mean, literally seconds of being set free. Uh, basically, uh, it's called a gate arrest, um, and basically police were waiting for him. Uh, he literally arrived, the police were waiting for him. He was cuffed, led away to a waiting van, took him to a nearby police station. He's been arrested on suspicion of rape, sexual assault, and a racially aggravated public order offence. Mm. Um, now, these are crimes which he's accused, he's not been convicted. These are crimes that happened uh, if, they, you know, if he was uh, responsible for them before he went to jail for whatever he has just been serving. But we were told that people have been clearly vetted and mm -hmm. they made to know that they were safe. Surely the police... Were, little check with, by the way, we reckon we've got some evidence <laughs> against this guy. Yeah. And why did they wait until the day is released? Why didn't they go and question him while he was in prison? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's all very, very bizarre, but it shows there's been no real vetting. And we've got, we've already seen other cases of, of you know, people, you know, who, you know, men being let out who, who have killed, but mm. because they're on a lower tariff for the, 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 the violent attack that they've carried out, that they're, they're eligible for release. When we were told, no, no, no violent or sex offenders. And then the argument is, well, they're coming out of 40% of their sentence, but they'd come out after 50% of their sentence anyway. Mm. Why don't we just let them out after one day of their sentence? Yeah. I mean, on that principle, let's just not even bother putting anyone behind bars at all, because they'll come out in the end. But also, there's a correlation between people who have a lifetime of sort of petty crime also building up to more and more violent crime. Yeah. So, yeah, what, how or even if it just stays as petty crime. Yeah. If it's non-stop, it's they need to be off the street. I mean, every, all sort of police forces will tell you this. Sotto voce, yeah. off the record, they say, look, you can probably narrow down about 80% of the so-called petty crime to a very small subset of each city's population. Yeah. And you can cure a lot of society's ills by just arresting them. Do they reckon 100,000 people are responsible for 50% of all the crime in this country? I think it's slightly higher, in fact, yes. I mean, and they say we haven't got enough people but we've got too many people but behind bars. Same... No, we know we need to put that 100,000 behind bars. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, the, it's the attitude towards crime, which is, is it about reform mm. or is it about protecting the yeah. public from the criminality that they continue to perpetuate? Which is the number one Yeah, issue. and neither yeah. actually is being addressed. We're not reforming these I people be, and we're releasing them I will to be commitment. tackling this in my column in the sun tomorrow, <laughs> you do want, if you do want to read that. Um, let me also just uh, talk about um, a knife wholesaler. He has surrendered 35,000 zombie blades. I mean, those 
big, huge machete mm. knives. Um, and is uh, basically, <laughs> this is extraordinary because they're offering a compensation scheme for people to hand these in. He basically said, oh, we're not going to sell them because, well, basically, because you're going to get done for selling them. So he's going to, he could be up liable for. 350 grand's worth of compensation from the public. Now, I'd rather they were off the streets, but this, this company bought these things mm. to sell them. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, they were legally allowed to sell them, to Which be fair. Which is the main problem, actually. Yeah. They shouldn't be Sporting allowed to sell Sporting wholesale, imported the knives in bulk and sold to retailers. Uh, they own a knife brand called Anglo Arms, which what's, what's uh, has something that apparently, they say, has a reputation with gangs. What, what sport could this possibly be for? Are they throwing knives? I mean, you know, at targets? I, I don't understand why it is that this particular yeah. thing, which, you know, along with the machete, you know, that famous thing that, you know, I'm sure people on the left will say is culturally very typical of Britain and has been for hundreds of years. Because, <laughs> you know, we, we had lots of jungle that we had to in hack In my childhood, we were, it was always the rage. In the bush in Norfolk, yes. yes. It was, you know, that... Back yeah, in Birmingham. Absolutely. There we were with our machetes. <laughs> but, you know, these two Having things... Having fun in the playground. These two things, which are now the sort of the standard of a loss of knife crime in this country, they shouldn't be a way in which yep. they are legally imported without an incredibly stringent licensing But again, system. this was another failing so. of the Tories. The of moment course. this stuff is spotted, deal with it. Don't wait until it becomes a problem. Can we talk about another crime? This is a serious crime. This is a crime is against... My suit? Well, apart from, the, apart from <laughs> your suit, this is a crime against humanity, if ever there was one. Um, have you seen this new statue of the late Queen uh, and... Uh, oh, the one and, in uh, and Northern Prince Ireland? Philip. Yeah. It is. It is. It's a wonderful headline. It's not good. One person has said. It's like, I mean, that doesn't. It's a bronze sculpture created by the North Belfast artist uh, Anto Brennan. It was unveiled in Antrim Castle Gardens on Friday. And if you haven't seen it, it's basically the late Queen, like late Prince Philip, two corgis, and she's got a sort of a headscarf on. I mean, frankly, I mean. It looks like Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Have we got a picture we can put up on the uh, TV screen? It looks Either like Mrs. Either of the statue Doubtfire. or Mrs. Doubtfire. I mean, Either it's just do. bizarre. It looks, like, it looks like your Auntie Doris is but out think... for a walk to go and feed the, you know, the pigeons. But I think this is a very good thing because, of course, you have two communities in Northern Ireland, one of which is obviously Loyalist and the other one is Republican. So the Loyalists have a statue of the late Queen and the Republicans have something to mock of the late yeah. Queen. So actually it's going to do wonders for community relations. I mean, relations. it's so bad. It doesn't look anything <laughs> like her. I mean, I've never done a bronze sculpture. <laughs> I could do a sculpture that looks more like like the late queen. Have you seen we, the... I'm so frustrated. Those who are watching on YouTube, we can't get the picture up for some reason, but we're doing we'll our best. We'll find it. But um, it, it better or worse than the one of Cristiano Ronaldo that looks like the head from Art Attack? It's in it's, that territory. It's that bad. It is in that territory. I'm, it's I'm, so I'm... bad it should go on the fourth plinth in Trafalgar Square. <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> That'll cause a row. It's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, God, it's not that bad, but yeah. there we are. Goodness grief. Uh, anyway, if you haven't seen it, I no, can't, can't get it in time. <laughs> anyway, we're, no, we've got it. Oh, finally, I've finished talking about it. If you, if you are looking at our YouTube page, I mean, it's... <laughs> it's so, it's so bad. I don't. I, I mean, everything about it is. To, even the corgis don't look like corgis. It looks like she's wearing a flak jacket, which again is very pertinent. It's it it's, literally, it literally doesn't look. I mean, genuinely, it couldn't look less like the Queen than. I, I mean. The corgis so, look more like the Queen. It's so bad. How do these things get commissioned? Can you imagine what Prince Philip would have said about this? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm happy she never had to see this, but I'm, I'm sad he didn't get I'm, to see with it. With you all the way. <laughs>